Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Archoria Synclavier V tutorial series. Today we're going to do a preset deep dive. This is the last episode in the series, and today we're going to really pull together everything we've learned previously by deconstructing this preset called Harpsy Lead to see how we combine all of those elements together to make the preset sound as good as possible. Hope you've enjoyed the series. If you have, please check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Awesome way to help support my channel. And an enormous thanks to everybody who's signed up so far. And without further ado, this is what the sound sounds like. So it's a mono sound. Each time I press a key, we get a really sharp sound. And then we've got a much more warm analog thing if we play legato. Let's figure out how this sound works. Let's have a look at the mixer, see how many sounds are involved. Six partials, so we can ignore partials seven to 12. And this is how I like to deconstruct presets in this particular synth. I'm going to solo each partial in turn and listen to it, but I also want to see what it's doing at the same time. So I'm selecting partial one and soloing it. And this is really just a very quick run through of the preset. I'm not trying to understand how it works yet. Just get in a flavor of how each of those six sounds stacks together. And then we disengage, solo, partial two, re-engage. So I'm getting an idea of which sounds are sampled, which sounds are modeled, whether there's any dynamic movement in the sound, and a general overview of each of them without worrying about any of the detail. We'll get to the detail in a moment. Very stock sound. Percussive kind of thing going on there. A much more high-pitched harpsichord sound as well. Now, as I was going through each one of those, I was taking a note of the sample name, getting a general idea of kind of what it looked like. And when I got to partial six, I noticed that partials one and six were actually the same sample. And you can see that they've been copied as well. If you have a look at the tuning, minus 3.1 cents, it's exactly the same on partial six. So this is clearly being copied across. And that's as good a place as any to start. Let's deconstruct partials one and six. And we'll do those two in tandem because they're using the same sample. Let's jump back to partial one first. So we've got no movement on the timeline. In other words, it's a static tone. It's coming from the sample. And what's different between that and partial six? Well, they're pitched very differently. The tuner is a really easy visual guide as to what's going on here. Partial six is playing a G. Partial one's playing a C, so they've clearly been detuned. Let's have a look over at the mixer to see how that's been done. So here's partial six, transposed up seven semitones, but also it's been pitched an entire octave higher as well. So this is 19 semitones, partial six is 19 semitones higher than partial one. When we play them side by side, we're getting that kind of power chord effect, the root with a perfect fifth played over the top of it, but the perfect fifth has also been shoved up into the upper register, giving us a much wider range of frequencies. So just with that simple effect, these are great things to kind of stick in your mental notebook. Double them, transpose them up an octave, add an extra seven semitones on, you've got this awesome sound. Having identified the difference between partials one and six, let's just take six away for a moment and concentrate back on partial one fully. Now fundamentally, this is a fairly stock sound. Granted, it's coming from a sample, but apart from the fact that it's playing back a complex tone in its own right, the synclavier itself isn't working particularly hard. It's a single partial timeline. Let's jump over to the envelope screen though, see if there's anything else interesting about partial one. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run down each of the six partials in turn, but this time from the perspective of seeing their envelopes. So here's partial one, and we have a fairly slow attack. I mean, it's quick, but it's not instantaneous. We've also got release envelopes for both amplitude and harmonic envelopes. Is the harmonic envelope doing anything for partial one? Let's have a look. FM mod is set to zero, the answer's no. So this envelope, the harmonic envelope's been set up, but just because your eyes are telling you something, you always have to make sure your ears are kind of confirming, hang on a minute, is that actually contributing to the sound? In this case, the answer's no. But we do have extra information about the preset now. 
partial one is contributing its envelope to the overall effect. If we run through the other partials, you'll see that partial one is quite singular in this, uh, in this case as well, because the rest of the partials have very straightforward envelopes, instantaneous attacks, and they're all getting on with their job more or less instantly until we get to partial six, where once again we have the same envelope. So partials one and six, which we've already seen, are basically brethren, siblings. They're doing a very similar kind of thing. So partials one and six are giving us that elongated attack. And if we temporarily inc increase the global amp offsets, we can listen to both of those envelopes with a little bit more emphasis. So if I just increase the attack a little bit, you can hear more clearly, it doesn't matter which partial we're looking at, we're listening to them both. There's the, en the envelope coming in more slowly. And then I can double click the global effect to take that back away again. So now very quickly, we've got a really good understanding of the basic kind of template of this sound. Partials one and six are in many ways the core, kind of the anchor point of the tone. They're what giving us the, the attack and the release to give us some sort of longevity to the sound. The rest of the partials seem to be just adding tonal color. We're gonna worry about what those tonal colors are in a moment. Now at some point pretty early on in your deconstruction of a preset, the next thing that you're going to want to do, and sometimes I'll choose to do this right from the very outset, is take away my effects because we have a delay and chorus on the sound here. They're gonna be having a quite dramatic impact on everything that we hear. Up until now, we've been very quickly running through the preset and we don't particularly care, but this is the point where I'm gonna take them away. So just to clarify, there's our delay. Let's take it away. And that's that gone. And what's the chorus doing to the sound? just fattening it up a little bit, but it's actually quite a subtle effect. Nevertheless, it's gone now. Everything that we're hearing is just coming from the partials. I'll stick an asterisk on that statement, actually. We will eventually need to have a look at the modulation matrix as well, but you can't do everything all at once. Just trying to simplify in baby steps, kind of reverse engineer this preset to get back to the point where, you know, we completely understand everything that's happening. I'm going to go back to exclusively soloing on partial one, finish off my story over there. Is there anything else interesting anywhere that I need to know about? Sometimes we can be fooled by this FM knob having very subtle um, values that are difficult to see. So I'm very quickly going to run down the preset seeing if M FM mod is um, set for any of these presets. And as we saw, only partial three has any. We're not there yet, but that's another thing that I'll need to remember to look at when we get to partial three. Other than that, from the mixer's perspective, FM mod's got nothing to do. Partial one is nice and straightforward. We've already seen the envelope. Quick peek at the two LFOs down at the bottom of the screen, and they're both at zero as well. So partial one is done. We're happy that we understand how that sound is working and what it's contributing to the overall effect. Okay, on to partial two. So this is another harpsichord, but this is an eight foot harpsichord, so it's got a lower tone bring partial one back in because we fully understand that there's those two sounds being combined together and those overtones particularly the four foot overtone from partial one is really again adding that extra thickness to the sound so all the time when I'm doing this kind of forensic analysis of any individual thing I'm always trying to bear in mind what's the context have a jump back to some other state so that I can kind of get different perspectives on how everything hangs together other than that, this is another very simple story from the engine's perspective. Again, in the mixer, all of the values are flat, not particularly interesting there. And even in the envelope, as we saw earlier, almost instantaneous attack. So partial two is a color sound. It's adding its thickness and richness to partial one, but it's doing it in a very abrupt manner. And so when we play non legato, it's partial two that's adding a lot of that instant snap to the sound. Now that I've said that, let's have a bit more of a think about legato because when I play legato, all of that harshness goes away. Why is that? Well, it's because both of these sounds are sampled. 
got a huge transient at the beginning, but then the sound tails away very quickly. And when I play legato, it doesn't re-trigger the sample. So this much softer, transient, free part of the sound is what you're hearing when you play legato. If you remember back from when we had to look at the primary interface, that effect's coming from the mono portamento switch. If I switch to, to mono retrig, you can see I'm playing legato there. You can see in the virtual keyboard, and now every key is triggering its sample each time. And back into screen mode. Good stuff, let's move on to partial three. Okay, here's our first modeled sound. Here are our additive harmonics. What does this sound like? Okay, and we have a timeline. We have four frames. Double click the timeline to make sure I can see it all, and I can. And we have the evolution over time from these um, four different modeled amplitude shapes. And that's what's giving us an extra dimension to our evolving sound. Don't forget, if you ever want to home in on a particular one of the partials, you can double click on it, then the solo light indicator comes on. And then you can hear just that partial. Put that back in context with one and three. There's an extra little bit of evolution to the sound now. Got partial one with its amplitude envelope, partial three with its evolving timeline, partial two just kind of minding its own business in the background, just providing color. Let's go back to the mixer and have a look at this FM mod value that we saw for partial three. Very minor, but nevertheless, it's, it's there, it's doing a job. So here's the sound, as the preset says. Let's take that 0.036 away. Dramatically different sound. Once again, you know, I said this when we were looking at the, um, the FM settings, tiny, tiny values can have a dramatic effect. Let's have a quick look at the modulator for this sound. Here's our modulator, reasonably complex. You know, there's quite a lot of harmonics uh, to, the, to each of the frames and they're revolving over time as well. But we're not done there either. We also have some fine offset on our chorus. Remember the chorus is this doubling effect. At one, you can't hear any doubling. I actually think that both sounds are being generated all the time. It's very difficult to identify because you can't hear it. But the moment you introduce any chorus offset at all, then those two sounds are playing against each other. And the combination of chorus and FM mod is what's actually contributing a large part of the sound's complexity. Let's take FM mod away again. And granted, it's a different sound. But now if I take away this fine tune for the chorus, it's wildly different. Bring in that double note eight again. On and off. It's much, much flatter without that little bit of chorus detune. Two identical sounds being played very, very slightly off pitched. If you want to hear more of it, turn the fine up, kind of accentuate the sound and then pull it back. There's the chorus quite clearly going out of tune now. One of these, uh, the, the duplicated copy is now significantly sharper and you can hear it really easily. But down at point eight, it's more difficult to identify something as being out of pitch. It just, it just sounds thicker. That's really what a chorus effect is all about. Now, obviously I've already deconstructed this sound. So I have a kind of set idea of what I want to talk about. And it's at this stage that I'm going to introduce another um, aspect of the preset, which is the modulation matrix. I haven't concentrated on it yet, but if we jump over there, the reason I'm making this detour at this point in time is partials three and four have some aftertouch mapped to frequency modulation amount. So let's hear that. I'm going to press the key as it stands. Now I'm going to press into the aftertouch. That's how dramatic FM mod can be. This 0.064 extra modulation 
it's as if this FM mod is basically being turned up a little bit more. Now I've done quite a lot of messing around with this preset. What I'm going to do is just jump away from the preset, come back to it, re-solo it so that we can hear exactly what the sound should sound like out of the box. <laughs> Okay, so that's what the aftertouch is doing. What else have we got? The modulation wheel is mapped to vibrato. At the moment, my modulation wheel's turned all the way down. So let's have some vibrato, bring the modulation wheel in, turned it up to about halfway there. Now I'll press into the key with my aftertouch. And then modulation wheel back down again. So partial three is doing a lot of heavy lifting. It sounds like there's nothing particularly dramatic when you first hear the sound out of the box but the combination of the mod wheel and the aftertouch give us access to an awful lot of tonal richness there. What else have we got in the mod matrix that's interesting? Well partials three and four are not velocity sensitive so we're going to hear all of their effect all of the time. Partials one and two are fully key sensitive so let's just listen to the first three partials because we've kind of deconstructed those so far. If I press a very light key and harder. So there's partials one and two doing their velocity sensitive thing, but partial three is absolutely consistent, regardless of how hard I hit the key. And very standard stuff over here, pitch bend and sustain pedal being mapped to tuning and note sustain as they are in most presets, frankly. Okay, thanks very much partial three. That was excellent stuff. We'll come back to you later. Let's have a look at partial four now. Well, I recognize this shape. That's a sawtooth. That's a standard, completely stock sawtooth. If I jump to a square and come back again, that's the wave. So a sawtooth wave of completely generic nature, there isn't a single other thing going on here, has just been added into the, into the sound for extra richness. Let's have a look at the mixer. Is there anything dramatic going on over there? No, FM mods turned all the way down envelope as simple as you like there's the envelope so partial four couldn't possibly be less interesting except to say that it's adding an extra harmonic content to the sound here's one two and three on their own it's definitely richening and thickening the sound just this kind of completely across the board extra harmonic oomph. Another one of those things, stick it in your mental notebook. If you want to add a really simple extra thing to a preset sound you're building, throw a sawtooth in, absolutely why not? Just bear in mind, of course, Partial 4 does have the modulation matrix mapping on the aftertouch as well. <laughs> All of that is coming from the simplest possible modulator. This is a stock sound. Partial 5 is the only one we've not looked at yet. This is a sample. Kind of a woodblock marimba sort of thing going on. But obviously it's a long kind of synthesized effect. There's no marimba that sounds like that. This is more tonal color. The mixer has nothing dramatic to say about the sound. We've already seen that the envelope is very straightforward, but the sound with and without partial five is quite different. Get that percussive hit, which is actually a very important part of the sound. less interesting without it being there. Subtle things are great. Sometimes you, you want to be smacked in the face by a really dramatic effect. Partial 3 is doing quite a lot of that kind of stuff, but Partial 5 on its own, that's just a great sound. We've already seen Partial 6 doing its thing up in the higher frequencies, just adding extra frequency dimension to the sound. Bring them all back together again. And that's the preset deconstructed and the series over. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.